What's going on, Packer fans? Welcome back to the Packer Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Packer Day Podcast. Thanks so much for joining me today. Going to get into my defensive grades from Packers Lions in just a moment. We'll go over some transactions, some injury updates, some news and notes. Uh, but let's start with the transactions because we did have a player go on the COVID list, and that is Lucas Patrick. First and foremost, uh, thoughts with Lucas. Hopefully he is not too unhealthy and able to return sooner rather than later and back to health in no time. You know, based on current or I guess, you know, most recent COVID issues, most have been returning relatively quickly. So hopefully Lucas is back not only by the time the divisional game plays, but hopefully well ahead of that so that he can practice all next week as an expected starter along the Packers offensive line. So a one to keep an eye on, but you know we've seen people return within the same week and Lucas testing positive on a Wednesday should give him, you know, Wednesday, a week before the game should give him plenty of time to return prior to next week. But again, first thoughts are with Lucas and hopefully he's feeling okay. And then the other news was Ben Braden is added back to the practice squad. We were sort of expecting that with Braden released and then uh, also Chris Blair released, keeping a spot open on the practice squad. Certainly Braden could have been claimed. It wouldn't have been shocking, but they are able to sneak him back on the practice squad, which as I sort of mentioned earlier this week, if, if things get back to Ben Braden, things have gone wrong again, right? Because you should have what Bakhtiari and Runyon and Patrick and Myers, and then, uh, you know, probably Billy Turner, uh, potentially as your starters. And then you should still have, you know, what players like Dennis Kelly and Yash Nyman and I mean, Royce Newman and so on and so forth. And the list goes on and on. Like it should be a while before you get down to Ben Braden again. So if Ben Braden has to play again for Green Bay, some things have definitely gone wrong, but he still provides valuable depth and you never shy away from adding a player like that to the practice squad when you can. He has great versatility. And if nothing else, it should give them a leg up on signing him to a reserve futures deal at the end of the year and getting him back on this team. And players like Ben Braden, by the way, could be insanely important to the Packers next season. What I mean by that is we know that this team is going to be insanely cap strapped. So they are going to have to work the fringes of the roster with players who can play a variety of positions and are going to be filled with vet minimum deals. And that is Ben Braden to a T. Like they're the 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 back end of the roster is going to be filled, and not even the back end, like the last like 20 spots of the roster, if not more, are going to be filled with back end vet minimum rookie type players. So they're going to have to fill out the roster with players exactly like Braden, and, and this gives them a leg up to re-signing him in the offseason and getting him on that reserve future deal. All right, on to more important things. Uh, Green Bay got some big players back from injury, including, yes, Zadarius Smith did in fact return to practice. And just based on some of the limited practice video that we were, we were able to see, he looked pretty darn spry. Now, David Bakhtiari looked pretty darn spry in uh, training camp as well, and it took him uh, well, until last week to return. So you can never uh, really tell too much. I certainly am not going to pretend to be a doctor, but hopefully that is good. Uh, not only a good sign, but a great sign for Zed, you know, Zedaria Smith that he was able to practice. We'll see, again, if he can continue to practice, no setbacks, and hopefully play in that divisional round game, and hopefully a handful of snaps, right? This isn't you know more than a handful. This isn't a offensive tackle position where you're never really subbing guys in and out and you really want to be out there for 70 snaps. This is a position where you could potentially play 15, 20 snaps. And if Green Bay can get that out of Z in the divisional round, and then hopefully a little bit more than that in the conference championship, and yes, I'm speaking it into existence, hopefully a little bit more than that in the Super Bowl, that would be huge, huge, huge for this Packers defense. So massive step for the Packers that they were able to get him back at practice. They also returned uh, both Billy Turner and Ty Summers on a individual basis. So, you know, Billy Turner uh, practicing in individual drills, as is Ty Summers, both of those players working their way back off of IR. So those are more great signs. I know not exactly everyone's on the Ty Summers fan club, but he should help the special teams if he's able to get back in time for the playoffs. And Billy Turner, you know, they'd have to make a decision on him too. Do they want to just keep Dennis Kelly in that spot, especially if Turner's not 100%, or do they want to full-fledged move forward with Turner back at the starting right tackle? A lot of these are going to be very difficult decisions, but these decisions will go a long way in changing the potential outcomes of these games. Not to press on a potential bad memory here, but Green Bay made the wrong decision in the NFC Championship game last year with a player sort of returning from injury in Kevin King. 
Kevin King got hurt early in the week, didn't practice, and he was thought to not be able to play in that game. He made a last second recovery and they sort of pressed him in and he played in the game and we know the rest. They signed Tremont Williams not too long before that. And as Tremont has gone on the record of saying, he was expected to start in that game for Kevin King. Green Bay made the wrong decision. I give Kevin King a ton of credit for trying to fight through and play through injury. He wasn't ready. He was awful in that game. And had Tremont Williams played in that game, who knows what the difference could have been in that in that game, in the NFC Championship. So I don't think one player changed the outcome there, but it was a, a big player who played awful in that game. And Green Bay got that one wrong. They can't get, now they have, what, four or five of those decisions. They can't get those wrong. They have to get these right. I don't see any way, you know, we're not talking about Kevin King here. We are talking about all pro caliber players that are returning. I mean, say for maybe a Josh Myers, right? That's that's a legit decision as, do you want to put a rookie in on the offensive line come playoff time who hasn't had a ton of snaps as of recently? That's a pretty big responsibility. So that could be one where maybe they lean in a different direction, but all of these are going to be major decisions and decisions that Matt LaFleur and the rest of the staff in front office cannot take lightly. And I'm sure they are going to be having a variety of these conversations. There were a few players that did not practice on Wednesday. MVS was one of them. So with that back issue, so that is definitely going to be one to monitor moving forward. And if he's able to get back on time, so not a great sign that he wasn't able to practice in his first practice on Wednesday. Kingsley Kiki still not practicing, which isn't a great sign for him. And then David Bakhtiari took a rest, basically a rest day, load management day, no further issue to the leg. This is, um, you know, it, you know what they deemed as like expected, right? Just load management, making sure that they're not overworking that uh, that knee and leg coming back from injury. So Kiki and MVS, the the two probably more to keep a little bit more of an eye on there. More injury news on the positive front. Aaron Rodgers said that his toe is very close to 100% and that he expects it to be 100% come next week. So I know he has been pretty phenomenal with the toe injury, but I still think this is overall a very good sign for Aaron Rodgers that he's back near 100%. Hopefully that will increase his mobility should he need it. And come playoff time, you know, you don't just want to be a sitting duck in the pocket. You And I know he's had fairly good mobility throughout this injury, but you could also see it gave him a ton of pain. It certainly increases the risk that his toe could get stepped on. So him being back near or close to or even at 100% would be big and certainly should give Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers a boost going into the playoffs. All right. Let's jump in and talk some defensive grades from this past week. Let's start with the positives. My three highest graded players this week, Dean Lowry at defensive line, Rashawn Gary at edge, and Preston Smith at edge. I thought the edge rushers were pretty darn good in this game. Even Garvin and Tipo were in the positives in this one. So edge rushers kind of, uh, you know, not kind of, they played very, very well. I thought Gary was very disruptive when he was in there. Same thing with Preston Smith. Those guys weren't stopped easily with the Detroit offensive tackles. I think if we would have seen them in a normal game setting and not subbing out quite as much, I think they probably would have even been more disruptive and showed up on people's radars a little bit more. But no question, both of them had a good game. And then uh, Dean Lowry. I mean, what more is there to say about his performance? Consistently getting in the backfield using bull rushes and power moves uh, to get offensive linemen off of him, to put, you know, push offensive linemen into the backfield to get separation, just all of it. I thought he had a really clean game, one of his best games in a long time. And again, as we've been talking about, Dean Lowry has been legit this season. He is a true net positive player on this team. He, you know, he's he's going to be a key part to this Packers defense on this potential Super Bowl run. And he is peaking at the right time and played again, arguably his best game over the last two seasons against Detroit. So hopefully he can follow that up moving forward. On the flip side, Shannon Sullivan and Chris Barnes, I thought were really poor in this game. I thought they really struggled. You want to go back and watch, and I think a lot of people sort of figured out the middle of the field was an issue. Chris Barnes and Shannon Sullivan. There was a lot of breakdowns there. They weren't always in the right spot. There were breakdowns in communication between the two of them. You could very easily tell. I think even on the, the game copy and, and just watching it live, you could tell the absence of Devondre Campbell, but you could tell it even more. Players just weren't always on the same page. Uh, there were There was a lot of lack of communication. And I think especially when you've got trick plays and like the leader of their defense, arguably in Devondre Campbell and the guy that's communicating everything and making sure that everyone's set on every play was not out there. And that was a major factor in that game. And Barnes just wasn't up to snuff. And you can tell like Chris Barnes as at this point in his career, he's a Robin. He's not a Batman. 
When he's been next to Devondre Campbell, he has played his role well. He's played his assignment well. There's definitely been some ups and downs, but he's been an average to slightly above average player in that role. In this case, when he had to be the guy, when he had to be Batman, was not up for it this week. And I'm not saying he can't be eventually. And I still think Chris Barnes is a nice player and still has some upside, but this was a tough week for him. Same thing with uh, Chandon Sullivan, struggled in coverage, had a couple, you know, just breakdowns in coverage, lack of communication or failure in in communicating things the correct way uh, with other teammates was an issue. So uh, I thought this was probably Chandon's worst game of the year. Same thing for Chris Barnes. And they both they needed both of those guys to step up um, and, and really kind of control the middle of that field, especially with Devondre Campbell out. And I thought if you go back and watch where where Detroit was attacking, a lot of times it was at Channon and Chris Barnes in the middle of the field, and neither of them unfortunately were able to step up. Tyler Lancaster was my third lowest graded player. I thought he struggled in the run game a little bit more. Had a couple plays here and there, uh, but just again, his, his overall athleticism in this one hurt him a little bit, got pushed back on a couple different occasions, got moved out of his gap. So nothing egregious from Tyler, but uh, would have liked to have seen a little bit of a better you know, overall play from him in this game. So top three, Dean Lowry, Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith. Bottom three, Chandon Sullivan, Chris Barnes, and Tyler Lancaster. As I mentioned, as I was kind of going through, I thought the middle of the field was a major issue for the Packers defense, again, in huge part due to the lack of Devondre Campbell. I thought discipline was a major issue, players being over aggressive, specifically on a lot of those trick plays and on the reverses and all of them. Like Green Bay just was not very assignment sure and just not disciplined at all. And I think ultimately that's what Matt LaFleur was so upset about because, you know, regardless of if you're a starter, a backup, you have a specific job that you're supposed to do and you can't get over aggressive on a play. You've got to maintain your responsibility. I think there was just too many breakdowns in that regards for Green Bay. That's ultimately what led to a 37 out, you know, point performance for the the Detroit Lions. And then, like I said, too many communication breakdowns. There's one thing, as I mentioned, I'm not worried about the trick plays. I'm not worried about, you know, the middle of the field. I think Devondre Campbell will come back and fix that. We don't even know how much Barnes and a Sullivan are going to play with all these players coming back. Like, I'm not concerned about any of that, but the communication breakdowns is something that I was a little bit concerned on coming out of this game. You're in week 18. You guys should be knowing what you're doing in these situations. Now, again, I do think Devondre Campbell being out and not being able to communicate everything pre-snap and get everyone on the same page definitely played a factor in that. But that is one thing I would like to see not be a factor come the playoffs. And hopefully Green Bay can get that all cleaned up during this week, having a bye week and then whatever they need to do next week to make sure that communication is sound and that that won't be an issue come the divisional round and then moving forward. That is going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I will be right back here tomorrow with Mike Wall. If you have not checked out the Mike Wall episodes yet, you are sincerely missing out. Make sure to check those out. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.